what's happening right now to some degree is you're probably using brute force to get things done. You're probably really good at that. I know that is my default mode. I can get some stuff done. You know, I got five kids in a business. I can plow through. However, that's not necessarily working smarter. This show is dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. Welcome to the Marriage, Kids, and Money podcast, everybody. This is Andy Hill. And today we're talking about how mindset matters when it comes to your goals. On this show, we focus a lot about how we can be the change so we can actually make change in our lives. We're all about that carpe diem lifestyle. We want to seize the day so we can build our family wealth and happiness. But what if our thinking is holding us back? What if our mindset and the story we tell ourselves is making achieving our goals so much harder Well, our guest today is diving deeper into the science of a mindset and helping us realize how success starts with our thinking. Megan Hyatt Miller is our mindset expert today. Megan is the president and chief executive officer at Michael Hyatt and Company and the co-host of the popular business podcast, Lead to Win. She's also Michael's oldest daughter. Under her leadership, Michael Hyatt and Company was named as one of Inc. Magazine's best workplaces for 2020, which ranks the top companies in America for their employee engagement. When she's not taking the company to new heights, she's fully present at home with her husband, Joel, and five kids in Franklin, Tennessee. Welcome to the show, Megan. Andy, thanks so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be on the show with you today. Absolutely. Well, you know, you and I are are, uh, singing the same song sheet a little bit with our lifestyles, with uh, kids at yes. home and, and building businesses. So this is, a, this is a great conversation. I'm excited to have you as well. Let's talk about mindset. Why is our thinking yeah. so important when it comes to tackling our goals? Well, most of us were raised with what we talk about in the book, Mind Your Mindset, as an action bias. You know, probably the reason that so many of your listeners have achieved what they have, the reason they're even thinking about building wealth and happiness and being intentional with their life is because they're good at taking action. And and I think there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there are great things about taking action. Obviously, we're not going to get any results if we don't take action in our lives. The problem is, is that sometimes the things that we want the most in our lives, you know, if you think about challenges in your relationships or challenges in your finances or challenges in building a business or a career that you really feel like captures your potential, sometimes the actions that we're taking are not leading to the results that we want, despite our best efforts, despite being connected to a really compelling purpose and all the rest. And what the science tells us is that's because the actions that we take are directly influenced by the story that we're telling ourselves. And what most of us don't realize, and this is, you know, in my adult life, this is new information to me in, you know, the last decade or so, is that um, our brain is always interpreting the events of our lives. You know, there's, there's what happens to us. And then there's what we say about what happens to us. And because our brain is designed to keep us safe and make sure that we're out of danger, its interpretation of the events of our lives often tends to be negative, tends to be risk averse, tends to be disempowering. And sometimes that's really great, you know, keeps keeps us alive, which, you know, check, we got that done. (laughs) But, um, But the problem is, is that sometimes those stories that we're telling ourselves actually are the very thing that are keeping us from having access to the kind of resources and solutions that we need to take the actions we need to take to get the results we want. And so that's why this thinking piece is kind of like the missing component of success that most of us have never thought about, ironically. Hmm. As you guys were diving deeper into this and maybe, you know, experiencing this with your clients, was this a a new way of thinking for a lot of people? Were they they just, hey, nose to the grindstone, get it over with? Uh, talk, yeah. talk, talk to us about that. Right. Well, part of what we do at our company, Full Focus, is that we are coaches for small business owners. We have hundreds of small business owner co- clients who uh, we work with to help them scale their businesses and all those kinds of things. And, you know, it's interesting. It's almost like 
there is a relationship between how successful someone is and how little they think about their thinking, hmm. partly because a lot of their thinking has actually worked well for them. You know, it's like I said a couple of minutes ago, you're not successful by accident. There are things that you habitually do that are leading to the success that you've experienced. The problem is getting success in all areas of our life, not just in our professional lives, for example, or not just up until a certain point in our professional lives, but really breaking through those ceilings that exist and also making sure that we're successful from a, a holistic perspective in terms of our health and our relationships and our contribution to the world is, is really important. And so what we have seen is that when people discover that they actually have agency over their results, because they have agency over the stories we tell and in the, in the book, mind your mindset, we get into three specific steps for how you go through the process of ultimately telling the kind of stories that are going to get you the results that you want. But when they unlock that, it unlocks a whole level of success that previously they didn't have any access to. I love that. You know, yeah, we, we talk a lot about financial goals on this show. Right. Uh, we have a personal finance focus, family finance focus on the show. I think you brought up something interesting there when we sort of tunnel vision on one section of our goals mm -hmm. that we maybe disregard some of the other areas that may affect our thinking. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah. Well, you know, your brain doesn't really discriminate. Like in our conscious thinking, it's almost like a little bento box. It's like, here's our money and here's our family and here's our work. And, you know, it's all nice and neat, at least conceptually in our mind. In real life, we know it doesn't work quite like that. But in our brain, it's much more jumbled together. And our brain basically takes our past experiences and uses those to predict the future. And remember, it has this bias toward keeping us safe. So it's not about like you becoming the best version of yourself or, you know, realizing your financial goals or really being free financially or making a great contribution that, you know, if you think about like back to psych psychology class, Maslow's hierarchy, those are like self-actualization. That's like at the top of the pyramid. Our brain is much more concerned with like the basic needs, you know, just keeping you alive and safe. And so sometimes, uh, you know, it just, it doesn't help us get there. And so we have these past experiences. Maybe, maybe you got really in debt when you were in college, you know, you fell for one of those credit card schemes that they go for the college kids with, and you developed a story about yourself that you're not very good with money, you know, or that every time you get money, maybe you got your first job and you went and got a car you couldn't afford or something like that, you know, well, your brain thinks, oh yeah, I remember when we got in trouble back there, we better be real careful now when you want to invest in your business because that sort of feels the same as that thing back there when you got some money and you, you tried to buy a car, you know, whatever. It's not very discriminating. And so it uses these past experiences, especially the ones that were painful, to help try to avoid the pain in the future. And so our predictions of the future, based on that kind of default mode of our brain, are not usually right. And they're definitely not usually helpful. And so that's where, um, you know, we got, we have to be conscious. And part of what we talk about in Mind Your Mindset is how can we develop this skill? And thankfully it is a skill that we can all learn that of self-awareness where we start to see and experience and identify these stories so that we actually can get in there and start shaking them loose a little bit. I love that. Before we get into some of those action steps that can help people push past this, let, let's get a little personal. I think you, your your mom yeah. was showing when you said uh, bento box because I just packed my kids' lunch <laughs> this morning. <laughs> and I've, I've sort of compartmentalized all of my yes. my goals as well as the uh, the veggie straws and the hot That's dog. That's my fantasy, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, talk to us about your lifestyle. You've got you've got yeah. quite the lifestyle here, Megan. You are a CEO of a very important company. You are a mother to five. Yeah. How do you manage this mindset? How do you keep a, yeah. a, a thinking that will help you keep mo moving forward with all of these balls in the air? <laughs> yeah, well, there are a lot of balls in the air, that's for sure. And, you know, I, my kids are uh, ages 21 to three. So we've really got like every life stage, every, you know, we've got adult, high school, middle school, toddler, you know, we've just, we've got it all. And one of the things, so my younger three children are adopted. And when my middle boys came home from Uganda in 2011, we were really overwhelmed. And I talk about this in the story by the needs that they had. Anybody who knows anything about adoption knows that 
children don't become available for adoption unless they've experienced pretty significant trauma. And, and that has to be dealt with as from a parenting perspective, very differently than, you know, kids that had all the, the right things happen in those early years to help them heal. And, you know, one of the things I realized pretty quickly is that in order to take care of my kids and give them what they needed, it was going to require a lot more hands-on care for me than might be possible or might be necessary in another context. So at this point, my career is really taking off. I was the COO or about to become the COO. And my dad, who now is my business partner, came to me and said, hey, I want you to become the COO. I think it's the right time. You know, this is kind of what I'm imagining. And I said, okay, but the only way that that's possible for me is if I can be done every day at three o'clock because I need to be the one to pick my kids up from school because we're doing all these therapies and different things after school. They need me and I can't afford to blow this. Like, you know, this is their, their life. And, you know, that's a good example of where that story actually predisposed my brain to find ways to make a full-time job fit into a 30 hour work week. I know not everybody has that level of agency over their schedule. And you know, that's not the point of the story, but the constraints enabled me and the story around the constraints enabled me to find ways to be efficient, to delegate, to look for shortcuts, to decide I'm not doing things, certain things, you know, like I'm just opting out of some things that I just frankly don't feel like I have the, the time to do. And that's been hugely helpful for me. And I've actually, now my kids are much older. The, the boys that we adopted were three and one at the time. They're now 14 and 12. So, you know, way down the road, everybody's doing really well. But I have maintained that schedule as our business has grown and it just makes my decisions better. It makes them uh, easier and clearer because the constraints are in place. And as a result, I don't feel regret about my parenting. I mean, sometimes I do, you know, in small ways, but like in the big ways, I feel like I'm showing up when I need to for work at, in my business and for my kids. And that's what we want for our clients. So at, at Full Focus, we call that the double win, winning at work and succeeding at life. And constraints are a big part of how you get there. I love that. And, and, I, and I love one of, one of my favorite laws, I guess, is Parkinson's law, where it says, okay, right. you'll, you'll get it done or you'll, you'll figure out a way. And your, and your way was delegation. I don't know, being more efficient. I'm sure there's lots yep. that, that goes into the success story yep. that, that, that you've developed there. But I think what you did is, is set your family goals first, which are yes. very important to you. And yes. then obviously, uh, you know, being successful in your, in mm -hmm. your business goals as well was a big way to go. You know, I, I think that you alluded to in the beginning, the storytelling that maybe we tell, yeah. uh, tell ourselves, or you told yourself throughout this, when you talk about this narrator in the book. I, I love that. I love that term because it, it either sounds like a bad guy or it could be a good guy in the story. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's your whole point. So talk to us about who this narrator is and then maybe how we can conquer this, this conversation with the narrator. Yeah. Well, it kind of helps at least to me to personify this and yeah. make it something outside of ourselves. Obviously it is inside ourselves. It's happening in our own brain, but we all, I think, feel like there's, there's somebody else in there that's talking to us. You know, there's like a little voice in our head. It's talking to us and we call that the narrator in the book and basically your narrator is really just your brain that is is trying to interpret the events of your life and make sense of them and that's really helpful you know it's trying to keep you out of danger it's trying to reduce the chaos and create order to your situations it's just that unfortunately the narrator doesn't always get it right because so often we're guessing you know i think that we feel like our stories are factual, but they're actually not. I mean, the, the data says that our memories of the past can be as much as 50% wrong, you know? And I mean, have you ever had an argument with someone about what happened and it's like your story is very different than their stories, like every lawsuit on the planet, you know? And, and in reality, it's just that our stories are different about what happened. You know, there are observable facts and then there's what we say about them. And so that's the job of the narrator is to create these stories. And what is cool about the narrator, though, while it feels like for most of our lives, it's just been going on autopilot and he or she just, you know, comes up with these stories that probably are holding us back in some really important ways. You can actually train this narrator. It's like, think of it like a little puppy. You know, you can train the puppy if you're willing to do the work. And the way that we do that is that we uh, go through these three steps that we talk about in the book. And so the first one is to identify whatever problem you're experiencing and the story that you're telling yourself about that. 
And this is one of those things that once you start practicing this, it just becomes so easy and second nature that you're like, oh, I'm telling myself the story. I had this happen in a business meeting this last week where I was, I thought I was confronting somebody on something that I really had a problem with. And I realized, oh my gosh, I'm telling a story about the situation that is not actually helpful at all here and nor is it true. And so then you interrogate the story. That's the second step. And this is where you're really trying to separate the fact from the fiction. I know it doesn't feel like fiction, but it's our subjective interpretation of those facts. And we go through a series of questions in the book that can help to kind of loosen this up. And then we get to the last step, which is about imagining a better story. What would actually be helpful here? And in my little example of a, a meeting that I was in last week, I thought that somebody was really not aligned with me. And there were certain things that had happened that based on my confirmation bias led me to believe that uh, she was not on board with something that I was trying to get done. What I realized is that actually I misread the situation. Again, I'm taking these disparate facts, trying to, my brain's trying to make sense of them, the narrator. And then uh, I realized, you know what? I am going to, after talking to her, I'm going to choose a better story that actually she has some concerns I need to incorporate into the solution that I'm coming up with, but actually she is on board and we're aligned around the outcome we both want. And I need to start taking action from that place instead of the place of she's against me. And that was just like, I'm like, I literally just wrote the book on this. And yet here I am in a story, you know, where I'm, I'm like doing the doom loop. And it was so great to realize, oh, I have control. I don't have to just default to this. I can use my narrator as my ally, even though at the beginning it feels like, she's not that helpful. I, I think that's great. And I think one th piece of the puzzle there is probably allowing yourself the time for those deeper thoughts. Yes. When yes. we're booked from calendar meeting to calendar meeting with no space in between for our work mm -hmm. day and then rushing to get home so we could be there at three to make sure that we're there yeah. with the kids. Talk about how people can maybe, if, if, if they feel that, what we just said, like the back to back to back, how do they create some space so that they can have yeah some time to identify the story and interrogate it and imagine a better one. Yeah. Well, I think part of it is it actually doesn't take that much time to do this. One of the things that we have created is called a self-coacher tool. And this is a bonus that you get when you pre-order the book, which is available at mindyourmindsetbook.com slash marriage. So that's a special page that we created for your folks. There's all kinds of fun stuff there uh, when you get the book. So, but this, this tool is just like a one page little template that you can print out and you can just really quickly, I mean, you could do this at the car line at school. You could do it while you're, you know, eating your lunch with one hand and, and riding with the other. But I think it's really just the first part is getting that uh, aware, awareness to become a default process. And one of my hacks for this is that I loop other people into this process. So this, my husband, Joel, is really good at this. We will do this for each other. Like, oh, that sounds kind of like a story. Are you sure that's true? You know, could it be anything else? Could anything else be happening? My dad and I do this with each other all the time. Our company culture has adopted this as well, where we kind of call each other out on what we call limiting beliefs, you know, which are basically just these stories, the stories that are truly confining for us. And I think that you can use other people to just help drive up that awareness so that it's not really that you need to take like an hour a day to journal. I mean, that would be awesome if you could make that happen. Personally, for me, that would be very difficult. But what you can do is learn to have the story and then the self-awareness that you're telling a story. And then the interrogation and imagining something better actually becomes really fast and easy once you practice it. I love that. Well, you just talked about the positives of having community, people to bounce yes. these ideas off of that are yeah. maybe a positive influence on your thinking situation and your, your success with minding your mindset. Talk about how maybe community or the people you gather yourself around could actually make the situation worse. Yeah. Well, part of how we come up with the stories that we tell is it's not just from our narrator. Our narrator is gathering information from the outside world. I mean, this could be from the news that you watch. I just read a really interesting article this morning in the Atlantic. I wish I could remember the title of it. It was by David Brooks. It was basically like why America's on the right track despite everything you've been told or something like that. And it was like all these statistics about how much better things are now than they were 20 years ago. And I thought, wow, what an empowering story. 
and and he was talking about how media, regardless of what side you're on, you know, whatever, how it's so predisposed because of the advertising model. And, you know, we know this, but to get those clicks on what's negative, plus our brain, remember, really likes to avoid danger. So all those fear-based messages are going to come up. And so we start telling ourselves that things are bad just by the news. And these are not even people we know, you know, this is just like the people out there, social media land, you know, TV news, online, whatever. When we think about other people that we know, maybe it could be somebody influential in your life, like a teacher or a mentor or even a spouse. I mean, sometimes, you know, I, I hate that that's the reality, but sometimes we have people in our lives who don't see the world the same way that, that we want to, even if we tend to kind of lean in that direction. And so I think this is where the awareness though comes into play because in between the stimulus and the response, we have a choice. And when we experience that stimulus, if somebody shares a story, like my dad tells a story about how when he was probably in his twenties, maybe early thirties, he had a mentor that said after a business failure who said, well, you're just not very good with money, Michael. And you know, that was a moment of personal failure, like having lost his business. And that comment by that person stuck for decades. And he didn't even know that it was there. I mean, that was always his rationale was like, oh, I'm not very good with money. I'm not very good with money. And then he realized, oh, maybe it's just because I haven't been educated around money. Like I don't have the skills. Skills are something you can acquire. This is not an innate ability. These are skills. And that really broke loose a whole season of decades following that, where he was able to engage with his finances personally, business finances, et cetera, at a totally different level. But these people have influence. So when you have this awareness, then you can realize I could tell myself a different story just because they think this and they think this is how the world works. And that's how these stories often sound. This is how the world works. This is how other people always are. This is how you always are. That's how they sound really certain. You can choose to put something else in its place once you know, even if you're confronted with negative stories from people every day, maybe you have a boss that's really negative. Maybe you have a business partner that uh, really doesn't see the potential that you see. Maybe you have a spouse uh, and you know, you can have compassion for these people, but you don't have to accept it as reality. You can realize, oh, this is just their subjective story and I can choose something different. I think that's great. I, I think that's a, that's a call for all of us to Mm-hmm. Think a bit deeper about the thoughts that are in our brain, the stories we're telling each other or telling ourselves and where those stories are maybe coming from. I know I sometimes yeah. uh, want to keep up with what's going on in the world and spend a little maybe too much time on Twitter or the news or whatever. And I come away a little bit like, wow, things are really bad. It's yeah. like, or oh, are they? Are they? Where, where, where are you seeking these stories? And, and, and that's why I always like to talk about on the show is that we can, we can be the news. We can, we can be the change we want to see in the news. We can be the change we so want to true. see in our mindset. Um, we're, we're in charge of that. Let, let's talk to the person who's listening and they're saying, ah, you know, Megan, this is all just too deep, all this thinking. And, 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 and I got I to gotta process all this stuff. I got to mind my mindset. I just have to get some stuff done this year and I don't have time for this. What would you say to this person? Well, first of all, I hear you and I understand that tension. Most of our clients that come into our coaching program come in overwhelmed. You know, they're, they care about growth, but they're, they're really busy. And so I get that. you got a lot on your plate. What I'll tell you though, from experience and working with hundreds and hundreds of people on this, uh, is that this is actually going to make your life easier. It's going to make it faster. You're, you know, what, what's happening right now to some degree is you're probably using brute force to get things done. You're probably really good at that. I know that is my default mode. I can get some stuff done. You know, I got five kids in a business I can plow through. However, that's not necessarily working smarter. And when you make your narrator your ally, and when you get a hold of this thinking as a tool in your tool belt, what you're going to find is it's actually way faster to get to the results you want because you're not the biggest obstacle between you and what you want anymore. And right now, you know, you have this invisible obstacle, which is called your brain and the stories it's telling you that is keeping you from getting you want and you what you want. And you have to do a lot of work to get around that. But if you go directly into it with the thinking, it's actually way faster and easier and it gets easier over time. So a little bit of work at the beginning is going to make you way faster and more efficient at getting what you want more quickly later on. 
I love it. It's like uh, measure twice, uh, cut yeah. cut once, right? You know, yes. <laughs> plan, yeah. plan beforehand, right? That's great. Well, there's somebody listening and they're inspired to sort of rethink the way they're thinking, to mind their mindset a little bit more as they move forward this year. Let's talk about one small step that they can take following this interview yeah. uh, to, to, to do that. Well, I would say go to mindyourmindsetbook.com slash marriage and download that self-coacher tool. This is, again, something you can print out, print like four or five of them, stick them in your car with a pin you know, clipped on the top. And whenever you're sitting there waiting for your kids or waiting at a doctor's office or you know wherever you just have five minutes, just work through that really quickly. And what you're going to find is you'll be able to do this in your head before you know it. It'll be really easy. And that, but this is kind of like the training wheels part. And that's why we created this as a bonus because we wanted people, we wanted to make it like so easy. It was like falling off a log. And that's what I would recommend, you know, take the paint by numbers approach and use this self coacher tool because it is so easy and so helpful to get yourself in that mode of, of developing your skills here. I love that. It's a combination of action and, and rethinking our thinking. I think, yep. I think it's fantastic, Megan. And everybody, be, before Megan goes, I just have to say that I've been a, a fan of the Full Focus Planner for probably three years now. It is something that really helps me go through my day and be intentional with how I'm doing it so that I'm not just going. I'm not just taking the action. I'm I'm specifically planning my day based on the goals that I've set for myself mm -hmm. and how they align with the man I want to be, the, the family man I want to be. So I would highly recommend the Full Focus Planner as well as uh, Mind mind Your Mindset. So please check out uh, Megan's uh, resource there. Mind your, Let's say it again, mindyourmindset.com slash marriage. Did I say it right or yep. not? Okay. mindyourmindsetbook.com slash marriage. There and yeah, go. there's there's several different bonuses for your listeners, including a course, the audiobook. So don't buy the audiobook, just get the actual physical book and we'll give you the audiobook for free. And then this self coacher tool, which is so helpful. So yeah, it's all there. Mindyourmindsetbook.com slash marriage. Excellent. Megan, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Andy, thanks so much for having me. This has been great.